Welcome back viewers, Jackie Dresser here with the Lake Erie Regional Grape Program. I'm here with Andy Joy and today we're going to talk about pruning. So the origins of pruning, where did we start? Well, you know, just like about every other vineyard practice, uh, it was usually done by hand and Nelson Shawless early work dealt with balanced pruning. And the theory behind balanced pruning, and there were several equations to do this, was that you're trying to match the fruit load that you're eventually going to put on a vine the potential yield you leave when you're pruning to the size of the vine. So there were various equations to do this, 20 plus 20, 30 plus 30, which would mean that for every pound of pruning weight, you're leaving 30 buds. And the theory behind that, again, is, is really to balance crop load. But what we have a scarcity of now uh, is labor. And that has kind of paved the way for a lot of mechanized pruning, which started, you know, that research began in the late 60s, early 70s. So Andy, can you take us kind of through the evolution of those early machines to something like we're looking at today? Yep. So a lot of the early machines uh, were nothing but just a bunch of sickle bars um, and you were just box hedging. So you were cutting the top, cutting the sides, cutting the bottom, just trying to tear down that bulk of what was out on the canopy and make a manageable vine. And then some hand follow-up could be done. A lot of times it was just left. Um, and so things evolved through to now we have pruners that have comber systems on them, uh, whether they be hay rake teeth, uh, poly fingers, um, you can comb up, you can comb down, depending on what you want to do to manage the vine and to thin out that vine. So what's the advantage to having a combing type system versus leaving a box? Mm -hmm. So just your box, pretty much what is there in the sickle bar is gonna get cut, nothing will get pulled out. Having the comber gives you the ability to comb through and pull out undergrowth from the bottom. You can peel off the top if you need to and it takes your canes that would be tangled up and pulls them out and, and draws them into the cutter so you can cut them off to length. And it just makes a more manageable vine to come back through and hand prune after the fact. So rather than having you know a really dense, compact canopy, you're mm -hmm. kind of allowing that to open up and maybe allowing yourself to cut a little bit longer canes and maybe mimic more of a hand pruning situation. Yep, exactly. Great. So can kind of take us through the architecture of this machine, what it does and uh, kind of how it was designed. All right, so this machine here that we have is a VMEC tool arm uh, with an oxbow type head when the oxbow was uh, manufacturing, producing the, the tool arm and the heads. Um, so this is a, I wouldn't say a copy, but an offshoot of what was the Friday machine in Michigan. And then the Joy Laporte pruner here um, in New York. So you have a comber style system with cutter bars behind. Some have a top cutter, but most just have uh, two vertical cutters. Um, then also the pruner, if you see up here, you've got your pivot point. Uh, the head swivels side to side. So if you have a leaning row or a terrace vineyard, um, you have the ability to make sure that head is perfectly evened up on the row as you're pruning. Um, so one thing too, you'll see um, the way our, our head is here. Um, this was a few years of development to get it. Um, most of the pruners first start out with a flat plate um, with fingers coming off of them. And then over time of running the machines, uh, we came up with the scalloped disc blade and then different sickle, uh, sickle blades to prevent wrapping and, and wreath making as you're going through. Um, so basically you've got your combers that are combing and then you've got your scallop parts that are breaking off any long bull wood. Um, so it, otherwise the original ones, it would turn into a giant wreath. Um, one thing too, you'll also notice we've got long rods and short rods. Our long rods are a uh, more flexible material um, allows us to get a, a good hit, but not necessarily a tear into the canopy. And then our short rods are a stiff rod. So the theory and idea behind it, and it works very well, is you've got your, your loose rod that kind of breaks things loose. And your stiff rod, not being as long, gives you that ability to grab and, and pull and not tear the whole cordon off the canopy. Um, it works really well, allows us to get up underneath um, and pull out the trash. Um, so if you have a, a vineyard that's been a couple years that has been very minimal hand follow-up, you can go through with this and it'll, it'll pull that dead wood out, it'll rake it off, and it gives you a very nice manageable 
vine that you can then come back through and hand follow up or you're set up to do um, shoot thinning. So. so would you say that this particular machine is a more aggressive pruner or a little more delicate pruner? Uh, this is, the way it's set up right now is pretty delicate, yet it has that, that midpoint of aggressiveness. I could take all these rods out. These are 5 eighths rod. I could change all these out to 3 quarter inch rod and completely tear a cord on right off. So you can make this machine by setting up your rods and, and thickness of your rods and flexibility of the rods. You can make it very delicate and you can make it super aggressive so you can completely remove a vineyard if you needed to. So there's a little bit of trial and error that goes yeah. in. Yeah, it all depends on what you have for a, a canopy that you need to, to work through. Great. So. And so what other types of designs of machine are out there? So this sort of looks a lot like the Laporte machine that's commercially available, correct? Yeah, that's correct. So that, like I said, it, it stemmed from the Friday machine in Michigan with a comer. So you've got this machine that has that comer style, the Joy machine, uh, which has the same style comer on it. Um, but every, they're all a sickle bar that then was modified to a comer to help you pick up those canes and to move those canes out yeah, and so into the cutters. What's the advantage of combing directionally? So combing up versus mm -hmm. comb combing down. So when you've got your canopy and it grows, you've got your tendrils and all your curlers that grab and wrap. So you'll have a canopy where you know, a lot of growers know you grab here and it's tugging all the way down there because everything's all grown together. So by being able to comb directionally up and down, if you need to, your first pass, you can go through with a comb down pass to break all those tendrils to tear that bull wood off and, and get that bulk off. And then you can come back through combing up on your next pass to cut it off to length and to get underneath that canopy and, and, and tear it out. Right. So. And so with, even with a machine like this that's able to comb directionally and do both sides of the canopy at once, mm -hmm. there's still hand follow-up that's needed, right? Yep, correct. So you're still going to have to come through and either hand follow-up or mechanical shoot thin. So there's a couple different ways when you, when you pre-prune and how aggressive your cutters are, how you know, long you leave your shoots and how many shoots you leave. And then, so you're either gonna come back through and you're gonna do hand follow up or you can mechanically shoot thin. So the hand so follow up would have to take place with hand crews before bud break. Correct. But shoot thinning could happen, you know, well after the threat of spring frost has passed yep, and you're exactly. able to then adjust your crop that way. Mm -hmm. So what are some other tools in the toolbox for, for managing crop? If let's say it's your first year mechanical pruning and you left way too many buds out there, what mm -hmm. else can you do? So if, if, you know, there's a few growers that have the Oxbow tool arm or it's a VMAC tool arm now, um, you could take this head off and you can put a shoot thinner head up and on there. Um, there's a couple different attachments, sprawl pruners and stuff like that, that were able to go on and off of this style head. Um, but a lot of guys that say they have uh, what would be the joy pruner that's manufactured out in the Finger Lakes at a, a weld shop out there. Um, that's a, a self-contained unit that is only a trimmer. Um, so one thing that has been thought up and guys can do is you can remove your cutters and you take this disc off and you put a flat plate on with the shoot thinner fingers and then so you can modify this to shoot thin. So there's, there's that option and idea as well. Otherwise the shoot thinner is nothing but a, a horseshoe that goes over the row and it has two hydraulic motors that spin and you have your shoot thinning fingers on it. And yeah, right, just right here. Yep, yeah, more or less. Yeah, so we'll do some follow up um, with when we have the shoot thinner mounted on here because that's something we we do every year yep. and we actually have variable rate trials going on that so we'll we'll pop back on with more information so another thing would be you know if they didn't want to shoot thin maybe they could do a crop estimate see how much is out there in fruit thin right yep exactly you can mechanically fruit thin with your harvester um, and we're doing variable rate fruit thinning trials um, also there's a couple different um, ideas that uh, spawned out of uh, uh, Morris, Aldridge. Morris Aldridge, that's it, thank you. Um, that on this tool arm, you could have a fruit thinner as well. Um, and so you could fruit thin. The only problem with that is you can't collect the fruit to do your crop estimate. Uh, there's a couple different ways that you have to calibrate it, but you know that once you went through and you could fruit thin that way. Um, so you have your shoot thinning method, fruit thinning method, um, and then just if you're gonna go through and prune, hand crews go back and, and 
adjust hand your crop up. and hand follow up afterwards. But no question about it. it, you know, it seems prudent in a mechanized system, especially if you're new at it, getting into mechanical pruning to make sure you're going out there and you have some semblance of an idea of how many buds you left mm -hmm. or how many shoots are there or how much fruits in the vineyard so you can make sure you get a nice ripe crop at the end yep. of the season. Correct. So for our viewers that might be interested in mechanical pruning, what are the commercially available options that work for the Lake Erie region right mm -hmm. now? Uh, so right now, the, the two options are you can go to LaPorte. LaPorte has a pruner that he will mount up onto your tractor. Um, very similar idea uh, to this, but it does not pivot. Um, and then there's the, the Joy pruner that you can get out of the Finger Lakes from the weld shop out there. Um, that one, very similar idea, combers, cutters, but that one does pivot. So you have the two options. So you can figure out, do I need to pivot? Do I not need to pivot? Um, so you have both those options, but they both are a comber. Um, the Joy pruner has a head similar to this. The Laporte pruner is a flat plate with fingers. Um, so they're, they're both the same, but yet they're both different. So, um, and then other pruners that are out there, there's, I mean, Polonk makes pruners, barrel yeah, pruners and stuff. they have a and a barrel pruner yep. and sort of an integrated fusion of the two. Correct, um, which is kind, kind of could be used in Concord, um, but there really hasn't been any trials done yet. Um, VMAC, the VMAC line, when Oxbow got rid of VMAC, uh, Midwest Grower Supply is the VMAC dealer sales rep. Um, they do have a sprawl pruner, a barrel pruner and stuff. They don't make the tractor mounted arm anymore. They make a trailer mounted version. Uh, so you have a tractor pulling the trailer and that trailer has two arms on it. So you can do two full complete rows. Um, and, and they have their pruning options as well. Um, hopefully, cross our fingers, we will be getting a spur pruner, a VMAX spur pruner to mount on this to go out and do some trials in our Concord vineyards here of spur pruning, box pruning, and seeing what we can do then mechanically shoot thinning, fruit thinning after the fact. So, As usual, we're going to try to make the mistakes or successes first so we can pass the information on to you in a kind of lower risk environment in our teaching vineyard. So. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think that that fairly covers it. And if, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments below and, and we're happy to follow up with you. So thanks yep. viewers.